Christmas. I hope you've had a lovely Christmas and welcome to our last service of 2020. Thanks so much for being part of our church family online and for checking in to our services throughout the year. I want to wish you a really happy new year. I hope that 2021 will be a really good year for all of us. It has been the weirdest year ever. Who would have thought this time last year that we would have lived through the things that we have lived through? It has been a tough year for all of us. There has been lots of heartache and there have been lots of challenges. And through the year, we have found different ways of being able to connect even through the challenges and through all that we've been facing. And I guess that we have found a spark of hope and we have found a love that has reminded us that we are together and that has just helped us through this time. For me, it has been a huge learning curve. At the beginning of lockdown, I was thinking, well, this won't last very long. Maybe if I just write services and we can sort of pass them out to people. And it became apparent really early that this was not going to be short term. And so for me, it's been about webcam, about learning movie editing, about accessing music and images, and hopefully getting better at what I've been sharing throughout the year. But I want to thank you for being part of that. I want to thank you for checking in. I want to thank you for just all the different ways in which you have shared during this past year and for the different ways that we have found a love that has held us together and has reminded us what it means to be church family. Today our theme is looking back, looking forward. And today I want us to remember the things that keep us strong through the hard things in our lives and that give us hope as we move forward into the year ahead. In season six of Sons of Anarchy, Jax Teller says, Figure out what's important to you. Know yourselves. Know what's in your heart and know what's right. Don't be swayed by fear or history or the opinions of outsiders. Find your own truth. It will lead you to the things you love. Each year in our end of year service, I pass out a template of five things. And the idea of this exercise is that at the end of each day, just before you go to sleep, you write down five things you have that have happened during the day that you are grateful for. And it can be things that have happened, it can be things that have come into your mind, it can be special people, it can be anything at all that you are grateful for. And at first you think, five things each day, that's a lot. But once you start doing it, you begin to recognise that there are so many things just in a day to be grateful for. And what this exercise does is that at the end of the day, it helps you to be in a good place in your heart and in your mind. It helps your mind to settle before you go to sleep and it helps you to sleep better and it helps you to wake up in a more positive way the next day. So worth a thought for this year ahead of if you are looking for something to make a difference in your life, five things at the end of the day to be grateful for. 
I invite you, as usual during our services, to pause me and to click on the links for our songs and videos during the service. On Facebook, you'll find it in the post below this one. And on YouTube, if you go right down to the bottom of the page, uh, underneath anything that's under this video, and find the comment section. And the first of the comment section is our links to our songs and videos. So please pause me and listen to our first song, which is Angels from the Realms of Glory. Today I have my crystal ball. Ah, if only I had had this at this time last year. But what would I have done differently? I might have bought more toilet rolls in February. But that apart, what difference would it have made? Do you know what? I don't think that knowing the future would be a blessing. There are so many things that I can't control. But I can always control how I respond to them. And that's what makes a difference in life journey. It's not knowing what's going to happen ahead of you. It's knowing that you can deal with it. And so as I step into a new year on Friday, I will remind myself what and who I have in my life. And I'll be grateful because those are the things and people that inspire me for all that lies ahead. I'll remind myself of the resources I have in myself, in who I am. Faith does not make things easy. It makes them possible. And so I'll find inspiration. I'll trust my intuition. I'll have the courage to be who I'm meant to be. And I'll try to take every opportunity that comes my way. And every day I will be the best version of myself that I can be. Let's do a prayer. God, I don't need to know the future because I'm not sure how much that would help me anyway. But I do know that in my life there are people and things that inspire me. I do know that in me I have the resources I need to deal with whatever I'll meet in what lies ahead of me. Amen. And please pause me and listen to our next song, which is Everybody Hurts. A poem written by Margaret MacDonald from our church family. For each and every one of us, we've lost the warmth of a stranger's smile, masked beneath eyes sometimes harder to read. Yet the gains are many and measured in the extra mile those very same strangers will tread to make this year easier for us to bear simply because they care. For the kingdom of God is within us. And a Bible reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, reading verses 2, 6 and 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. They lived in a land of shadows, but now light is shining on them. A child 
is born to us. A son is given to us and he'll be our ruler. He'll be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace. His royal power will continue to grow. His kingdom will always be at peace. He will rule as King David's successor, basing his power on right and justice from now until the end of time. God is determined to do all this. And I invite you to share in a prayer. Spirit unseen, burn strong within my soul. Spirit unseen, let me breathe you deep within. Spirit unseen, awaken me to realise that God is at the very heart of my existence. So the ordinary happening is wondrously filled with God light. The truth is, I am loved. I am loved. Amen. And please pause me and listen to our next song, which is The Time of Your Life. And once you've listened to that, then please just move on to the next video, which is an audio advert. It's called Proud Parent. A piece from a video blog called Live Like Louise. You're getting pulled in more directions than ever right now. You're being tested to your limits, no doubt. What's important during these times is to grasp the initiative each day. Don't let the day ahead, which is going to pull, push, throw you in many directions, wrestle back. Sometimes, when life scowls most spitefully, she is preparing her most dazzling gifts. Turbulent times are ahead, but there is no doubt we can all get through this and become better human beings in every single way. More mindful of our health. A stronger body. More open to hard discussions about inequality. More educated on racism and world history. A better understanding of who we are and what we stand for. More empathetic. And more. There is no doubt that these times will feel too much for many. The overwhelm can be too much. But the only way to stop that from happening is to take on fewer tasks and execute on more each day. If you only focus on 24 hours at a time, it's all you can do. You don't need to read a book, hit perfect macros, have an amazing workout, walk 10,000 steps, lose two pounds and get stronger in one day. By committing to less, you complete more. 
and when we make progress, even if it's slow, that's when we do feel alive. Take on less to do more. And please pause me again, listen to our next song, which is Love Came Down at Christmas, and then move straight on to our next video, which is What Is Your Biggest Regret? A recent study found that if bees work too hard, they make mistakes. Bees give directions to nectar-rich flowers in a dance. And apparently, if they're tired, their dances get less precise and harder to follow. I guess that's sort of obvious. It is exactly what you'd expect. And if that works for bees, then it's pretty obvious. Then that's also how it works for us. I think we're all feeling tired right now. Not tired like I've had a late night or I've done something that's really wiped me out. More a sort of long-term tired. Throughout the past year, nothing has been straightforward. Everything has required thought, effort, changing your approach. There's almost nothing you've been able to do automatically. Araya Mountain Dreamer says, I realise that while I am very good at estimating how much time it takes me to do something, I'm very bad at evaluating how much energy it takes to do something. For me, that is really powerful. What we have lived through what we are living through has taken a lot of energy. So be kind to yourself. Allow yourself sometimes to miss a step in the dance and don't beat yourself up about it. Give yourself space to replenish your energy. And don't give yourself a hard time for needing the space to do that. At a time when a lot of people and things that usually give you energy are less accessible, it's more important than ever to look deep inside to find that energy. And be a little more understanding of others. Because for them too, the dance is harder. This time has maybe helped us to appreciate others more, but it's also given people an excuse to be judgmental. And there's a strange polar opposite of this surreal world that we're living in, both the appreciation and the judgment. And I hope today the appreciation is the one that will shine through for us. Take a moment to share your gratitude of those you appreciate and hesitate for a moment before you judge. Let's do a prayer. God, I'm not that good at assessing how much energy it takes to do something. And this past year, my energy just seems to have been wiped out. And I guess part of that is that the people and the things that often inspire me or give me energy have just not been as accessible. 
help me in these times to take time out to know that somewhere I need to find new energy if I am still to give energy out today I appreciate those in my life who make a difference to me and today I will try hard not to judge others. Amen. I'm going to share with you some inspirational quotes for the year ahead. Susan Jeffers said, My life is beautiful. I have it all. But even in the sunshine, one has to cry sometimes. Proust said, The real challenge lies not in seeking new landscapes, but in seeing them with new eyes. In Ender's Game, Peter Ender Wiggins says, There are times when the world is rearranging itself, and at times like that, the right words can change the world. In the darkest hour, Clementine Churchill says, You are strong. Because you are imperfect. You are wise because you have doubts. In the documentary Serengeti, for all of us, embracing our destiny can be the hardest challenge of all. And from Winnie the Pooh, you are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. Thanks so much for joining me today for our last of this year's services for our looking forward to the year ahead. I hope that 2021 will bring good times for you. I hope it will bring good health and I hope it will bring a brighter journey ahead for all of us. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your love, support and encouragement. I hope you have a good day, a good week ahead and a happy new year when that arrives. I invite you to share just for a moment in a moment for reflection the song we're going to listen to in our moment for reflection is Loka Samasta Sukinu Bavantu and then our closing song is O Little Town of Bethlehem and then our closing prayer is May God's Blessing Surround You Today and each of them is linked one after the other take care